Well, we're back at this place, picking up the same stuff we had just last week. I'm not loaded yet. And it just started pouring down rain up in here. <laughs> Well, that lasted all of about five minutes. Unless that stuff's coming this way, which I think it is. Or that stuff over there. I don't know why I'm making a video right now. I have a pingy up oh, headache. Ish. Freaking beautiful, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Nice ultra thick tread. Nice. Oh, up. And up. What the happened here? <laughs> Oh, him up. And here's the ultra random shot of my load in between. So yeah, I'm in of Laredo, Texas, of all places for this kind of ish slope to happen. Hot as a per oh, for them on crack and eating ish at the same time. Anyway, um. Uh, so I'm coming down I-35 from Dallas-Fort Worth area. Actually, I started in Atoka, Oklahoma this morning. And, uh, shooting down I-35, and I hear this wump thump come from behind me. I thought something had maybe fallen out of the sleeper or something. I think it was just north of San Antonio, south of Austin, somewhere in between there. And I heard it. And it's dark, so obviously I can't see anything. And so I kept going. Didn't think, didn't think too much about it. It didn't feel like the truck had changed, and uh, I would have seen the trailer tires if they had been like flapping loose or something. But everything looked good, so from from what I could see in the windows, so I just kept on going. And this guy right here that tells me what my tire pressures are said all of my tire pressures were good so my drive tires and my front tires were still okay so i'm like all right let's just keep on doing things here so i get all the way down here drop my load off and here's a picture of the load i was taking down a oh, fun little bit here and uh i was parked up against a fence with a bunch of grass on the right side so I couldn't see it then either so I backed up and then drove about 10 miles to my next shipper where I picked up this trailer with the load on it and I get around to the other side and I look down and I'm like oh uh, to backtrack a little bit on my way over I kept having a very bad problem with wheel hop every single time I'd go to take off from a light or something and there's like 50 million red lights in this city and hunt them all. But every time I take off from one, the wheels would jump like I was on ice or something. Actually, it wasn't even like I was on ice. It was just jumping around like just terribly wheel hoppy and everything. So... I get over to the shipper and I do a quick walk around of both the tractor and trailer because new trailer I check every single time and I see that I'm like oh really now so I'm sitting here at TA Pilot Flying J big upside cluster of truck stops here at exit 13 on I-35 where I am waiting for them to give me a call to get me in for another new tire oh fuck man I got Taco Bell so I'm just gonna eat that for now 
and this day is going to yeah that's much better even though it doesn't match the other three anymore oh well at least it's a fully treaded tire and I'm pretty sure it's also a freaking retread you can kind of see the seam eh, I don't know how to tell because these are retreads and they don't really look like it so whatever in the meantime that's where she sits and that's where she's gonna stay until such time I can make it back up to Tulsa and drop it off. I am idling my freaking truck because this thing cannot keep up with the heat here because it is too hot. As noted, it's hell out there. Yeah, 111 for the right front. 108 for the left front, 109, 115, 90. Oh, they didn't freaking fill it up enough. Enough? What the? Uh, I can fix that. I've been filling up that left rear for the longest nick of time. Why the hell not? 83 degrees in here, and this truck's been running for almost 10 minutes now. And they. Oh, hey, it's hot. Oh, I hate this nickel city so much. But now, it's time to die again. Uh, it's bedtime actually, it's f now. 6.15 and I intend to be up at 1 in the morning. Yeah, that's gonna f work out great. There goes the APU so I can shut everything off. Get back here, point the vents at my and hope it works. Close the curtains so we can get a little bit more cool back here and a little less heat. And I'm gonna stack the blankets up against the window because if I just close the curtain, then the freaking curtain absorbs all the heat inside the freaking place and it doesn't work very well. And it's not like I'm gonna be freaking using the blankets tonight because it's up for them hot, as I might have mentioned a couple hundred times. <laughs> I forgot I had the fan on over here too. Yeah, I might just keep that on. I might just hang it from the ceiling or something like I do every now and then. But in the meantime, it's bedtime. There we go. It's perfect. He's taking the air from that vent down there. This bottle won't get up out of the way of. The vent's blowing directly up into the fan, and the fan's blowing it directly up into the ceiling. Get rid of this freaking heat that's just piling up here. So, that's how that's gonna work. Good night. So here's a load I'm glad I'm not stuck with. Dang, look at all this stuff just hanging out everywhere. No way to get edge protection. Well, you can get edge protection up there. And it looks like it would need it. Dang. And of course, I'm getting fog. There we go. Another Paul guy. Oh man, I'm glad I didn't get stuck with that load. I don't envy you, buddy. Getting done checking up my own truck, getting ready to take off. At two in the freaking morning. Okay, so you're probably noticing right off the bat that this isn't running. My engine is, the main engine on the truck. Well, if you look here, you might notice something not good. Well, two somethings. One, that little bit of red fluid there that happens to be antifreeze from this thing. And two, 
this serpentine belt that used to run the APU water pump and alternator. <laughs> yeah, there's the crank, there's the water pump, and the alternator, and I'm pretty sure is that little pulley back there. But the belt is split, and little pieces of it can be seen down here. So that is just lovely. And uh, here's what they did to the relay. They uh, just kind of spliced a new housing or a new wiring harness connector on and stuck a new relay on there. That was working fine. So when I got in and it said engine overheated, I automatically assumed that that had failed. Well, <laughs> nope. Not this time. Yeah, it'll come up with engine overheated. Like, I'll clear it out. And, okay, it'll actually clear out this time. A lot of times, if you get it within the first couple minutes, it won't clear out. But anyway, when I started it up after clearing the code, it would only give me about 12.2 volts. And I was like, well, that ain't right. The truck had 12.6 when I got into it a minute ago. Well, then I take the case off the APU and I see that belt just sticking out and it knocked off the top of the uh, antifreeze overflow bottle. That deal right there, it just knocked the, ca it knocked the cap right off of it. So I'm guessing that's what blew antifreeze all over since it overheated. So we can just put that back on there. Yeah, that sucker's a little warm right now. Because <laughs> I ran it probably about five minutes worth and shoot. That's all it takes for diesel engines to overheat, I guess. Not much. So anyway, I got out here and it was running and then it went overheat again. I'm like, wait a minute, the fans are working fine. So I get out here take the cover off and I see all that it's like <laughs> this APU is determined to be a complete piece of ish that's pretty much all I'm going to say about that right now so I can put this back in my truck just extra antifreeze that I keep for the truck and APU and uh, thankfully this load here is going up to Sand Springs which is all of eight miles from the terminal so that's great I can just drop the load off on Tuesday morning since this is Labor Day weekend. I have an extended weekend off, but uh, we'll go back Tuesday morning and they get to replace the cert belt now. So that's just great. Just fantastic. I'm going to make sure this one's still in good shape. That one looks like it is still on there running the generator. Too bad the generator ain't much help at this point. <laughs> uh, Always something with this stupid thing. Tell you what. Alright, well, looks like I'm just gonna have to come out here tomorrow and Monday and just start her up for a couple minutes to charge the batteries because this thing loses charge pretty quick and I don't want it to have to deal with that, so. Yeah! Like, I'm only 39 hours into my four day weekend. <laughs> I got here at six o'clock Friday morning so yeah that's just awesome and I don't have to be in Sand Springs until eight o'clock Tuesday morning so that's even more awesome so I'm just gonna go ahead and shut her down and we can shut this guy off cuz I'm just not even gonna let it run I'm just gonna have to come back out here and get the Start it up and just let it charge the batteries and all. So, that's my little update for the moment. I'm going to go back home now and since I have perishables in my truck right now, that dang it, I freaking APU, I completely forgot about it. Thanks! Alright, pull my key out. Lock her up and go. Get this cover put back on and all that fun stuff. Ugh! It's always something! <laughs> Oh, my God.